Yeah, let's uh, move on to the next unit, synonyms and antonyms. So, as seen earlier, synonyms is nothing but the meaning of certain words. Antonyms is the opposite of certain words. So, let's see what the definition is. Words that have similar definitions or meanings are known as synonyms. These are words that can be used interchangeably without changing the intended meaning of the message. So, when you say a particular word and when you come up with another word, both these words are supposed to be similar. The meaning should not be changed when you utter both words. Right? For example, if I were to say uh, long, the, the movie is long and the movie is lengthy. Both long and lengthy could be altered here and there. But what happens is when you utter this in a sentence, the meaning should not be changed. The movie is long, the movie is lengthy. It's one and the same. So that's the common thing that you'll have to think of when it comes to synonyms of two words. So that's exam exactly the example that's given there. Lengthy replaced the word long. So if you look at the first two sentences there, the long movie bored the viewers and the lengthy movie bored the viewers. It seems the second sentence is more appropriate than the first one. Why? Because where would you use the word long? For example, I walked a long way. You don't say I walked a lengthy way. But the movie is lengthy. So that's why you remember I told you in the last session. Appropriate words in the appropriate context. So that's the thing that you'll have to keep in mind. Let's take the next one. Take the words cost, change, fee. All are used to describe money you pay for something. However, all three have different connotations. Okay. Cost. The cost of the book is 200 rupees. Right. Where do you use charge? The shopkeeper charged me 20 rupees extra. And the third one, I paid an exorbitant amount of fee to pass the examination. All three involves money, but in different connotations. So you need to understand that synonyms are very important. Like I said, if somebody utters a new word, you must be in a position to understand what that word means. So only when you know the synonym of a particular word, will it be easy for you to follow what someone speaks. Okay. Look at the next one. The total cost of the trip was rupees 10,000. You can get a new phone at the cost of rupees 3,000. They protest against the high cost of living. Right. Look at the way. Cost is being used in different perspectives. Right, so I mean, I mean uh, language itself or uh, speaking a language itself is an art. Right, some people have the ability to uh, convince others because they have the potential to speak in such a manner. Right, today people say Narendra Modi is somebody who is a people's choice. Why? Because they believe that he has the crowd pull because of his ability to speak and convey things in the right manner. And that's why, you know, I you remember I spoke about Barack Obama when he contested in the elections for the very first time, when he went around his very famous speech. What is that very famous speech of Barack Obama? Yes, we can. Remember? That's how he started. That was 
the few words that he started off with. Right? So, yes, we can could mean we want to bring about a change. We can unite together and we can make wonders. We can all come together and make sure that America is a better country than before. It could also mean, yes, we can. As an African-American, as a racially inferior, so to speak, person, I can also come to power. So there could be multiple things that you perceive of it. Right. So that's why it's always essential for you to speak in such a way that you convince your audience. If you are not able to convince your audience, then your communication needs some sort of an upgradation. Right. So that's the thing that you will have to think of. Now let's move on to antonyms. Antonyms are defined as pairs or groups of words that are the notionally opposite. The, the, the opposite of good is bad. Can you also say the, op the opposite of good is wrong? No, it may not be appropriate. The opposite of right is wrong. So, exact words are to be understood. So that's why, you know, there needs a, a lot of practice with regards to synonyms as opposed to antonyms. Okay. Now look at the examples given there. Graded antonyms are pairs of words whose meaning do not have equal weighting. Such words are called gradable antonyms as they do not hold an either or relationship. Instead, they have a more or less, more less association. Give a, look at the examples there. Now I want you to go to the pre previous one and look at the examples there. Brave is the antonym for covered. My uncle was a brave warrior, right? But I am covered. You understand the difference between the positive and the negative word. But look at the next line. Evil, malicious, bad, corrupt are all antonyms of good. So the initial thing that we heard was good opposite bad. But good can also be the opposite to evil. Malicious, bad, corrupt. and corrupt. What sort of an officer is he? He is a good officer. As opposed to he is a corrupt officer. What sort of a person is he? He is a good person as opposed to a malicious per person. What sort of a person is he? He is good and the other person is evil. He is evil minded. He is good minded. So these are also certain antonyms that can substitute the exact antonym that you can present good as opposed to bad right so these are things that you'll have to develop over a period of time as well now look at the next one the last one in this next paragraph such words have graded grades such as fairer darker or less dark for example if i want to communicate something to you and i want to make sure make sure that you understand it appropriately rather than saying look at the dark picture if there are three different pictures that are dark then i should make it very specific by saying the one that is fairer the one that is less darker or the one that is darker so these are also antonyms so to speak right so what are the advantages of knowing synonyms and antonyms there are numerous advantages of knowing synonyms and antonyms the first advantage one can identify is that knowledge of synonym and antonym helps us to express ideas clearly. 
See, sometimes, I don't know, uh, let me see if I can make you understand with this way. Certain people speak, but when they speak, suddenly they get stuck. Why do they get stuck? Why do they get stuck? Suddenly they get stuck. They search for words. Why? Because they may not necessarily know the apt word to use in that context. Right? For example, I want to convey something like a desert plant that is more like a thorn. If I were to say so, how many will understand that what I am trying to refer to? But if I say cactus, everybody will be able to understand what I am trying to say. So that's the difference between trying to explain about something and trying to know the exact word. Okay, so that's the difference between knowing certain words and not knowing certain words. So these are advantages. Second one. Understanding and using synonyms and antonyms is important for not only precise communication, but to avoid monotony of expression. Now, what do you mean by monotony of expression? Some people speak. They repeat the things over and over again to such an extent that you get bored. It becomes monotonous. Monotonous meaning very dull and sober. Very dull and sober. So I have given you two antonyms or two synonyms for the word monotonous, dull and sober. He's always sober in class. What does it mean? He's very silent in class. He's very dull in class. He's not active in class. So these are things that you'll have to build on from the words that you have. Right. So that's the second thing that you'll have to keep in mind. The third one is more important than the first two. You should all use antonym and synonyms to reduce redundancy. What do you mean by redundancy? Some words become redundant. Right? When you, when you write something, when you describe something, it's not necessary. For example, if I am going to write about, okay, Aditya as a student. If I were to write uh, one paragraph like that. Example. Aditya is a an aspire Aditya is an aspiring chartered accountant or Aditya is an as aspiring candidate who is regular to class full stop I can't once again state Aditya is he is so when I use the same thing over and over and again it becomes redundant okay so you need to Reduce the redundancy and keep writing or speech interesting to the audience. Okay, so one of the reasons why you feel English grammar is redundant is because we've been listening to this from 6th standard onwards or in some cases 4th standard onwards. But it's still not going off you. The monkey remains at the back of you constantly. Right, and now you may ask me a question. You know, I have to fa pass my chartered accounts exam. How is business communication important? But then it's important, right? So in that case, this is not necessarily redundant. So that's the thing that you'll have to understand. In addition, you can develop a full understanding of an area if you learn the different synonyms that we saw it earlier as well. For medical field, there are certain things. You know, I, I don't know how many of you heard of this particular thing called medical transcription, transcriptionists. Medical transcribers who transcribe medicines. There's a particular job like that, transcriptionists. So these people, they code everything with regards to that pharmaceutical industry. Much like your software engineers as opposed to hardware engineers, what the software engineer does is not necessarily what the hardware engineer does. So each of these things are different components of the same field. So likewise, you in order to master a particular field, you need to know the specific synonyms and antonyms of that particular domain that you are choosing. 
And that's why I said the, the, the domain that you have chosen is commerce, accounts, stats, math, if at all it is, law and things like that. So you need to master certain concepts, ideas and so on and so forth. So let's see, you know, there are certain words, there are certain synonyms and antonyms as well. So before uh, we go to the uh, words that are given here as examples, I want you to understand one thing. Now, what I have seen in my knowledge, at least the last two, three times, I have seen there are enough and more questions from an examination point of view, that there are questions asked on synonyms, there are questions asked on antonyms, there are questions on active and passive voice, there are questions on direct and indirect speech as well. So these four areas along with compound uh, sentences as well, these five areas are very core components that are very much part of the 40 marks pattern. So you can't but leave out this particular concepts or these particular <coughs> topics. Look at it. So how do you spell the, uh, how do you pronounce the first word? Can I ask uh, Aditya to? Abhor. Okay, so what does it mean by abhor? Hate. Hate. Detest. detest. Loathe. Loathe. I detest speaking to this fellow because he is not a trustworthy fellow. Okay? I hate him because he did something wrong to me. I loathe him to the core. I hate him to the core. Antonym. Love, like, admire, relish. You don't say I relish him. That's wrong. I relish the food. So context specific is something that you need to keep in mind for antonyms as well. I love him because he is a good friend of mine. I like his character because he is someone who is very polite. I admire him because he has the ability to convince everybody. I relish the food because it's very yummy or tasty or whatnot. Understand? Next one. You can look at the board. Bombastic. Now, what do you mean by bombastic? The meaning of bombastic means pompous. Right? Someone who is very talking about high of himself. Talking high about himself. Loud. Right? Always trying to talk about his own credentials and positives. Flamboyant. Saurav Ganguly was a flamboyant batsman. Meaning, somebody who was a fascinating batsman. Who was, able, who was able to score freely well. The antonym, dull. He was a dull student. Inactive. Lackluster. Right? His lackluster performance in the examination was the reason for his inability to clear CA. Lackluster. You understand where to use the word? So these are words that you must develop over a period of time. So go back home, find out what it means by pompous. Because the word bombastic itself is difficult. And the synonym pompous is also difficult, I believe. Yes or no? Yes, You've heard of this word pompous before? Yeah. So go back and refer to the dictionary and write down. After writing down, write a sentence based on that. That's how you develop. Next one, cacophony. What's cacophony? Harsh. Harsh sound. You must have heard screeching sound. The screeching sound that was from the opposite building irritated me, unnerved me. Unnerved meaning what? Disturbed me. Right? Disagreeable noise. Arnab Goswami's noise is disagreeable noise. He doesn't allow anybody else to speak. Example. Next one. Euphony. My friend always speaks in a euphemistic, not euphemistic, euphony. 
Next one. Pleasant sound. Euphoniously he spoke to me. Right? He spoke to me pleasantly. This particular person has a pleasant voice. I heard a pleasing sound coming from the zoo and that put me to sleep. Next one. Jovial. Cheerful, lively, joyous and opposites are sad, morose, dull and unhappy. Next one. Dirty, squalid, filthy, unkempt. Unkempt meaning? You remember I told you in the very first class, somebody comes to your class in an unkempt manner. Right? Unorganized, disorganized. Clean, hygienic, hygienic organized. organized. Next one. Verdant. Lush green forest. I went into a lush green forest close to close to Bandipur and I felt so happy. Grassy. Flourishing. Right? Antonyms are infertile, barren, dry, parched. Parts can also be used for throat. My throat is parched. Can you lend me some water? So that I can quench my thirst. Don't say I want to fill my thirst. I want to quench my thirst. Spelling Q-U-E-N-C-H. Quench my thirst. Next one. Destitute. Who is a destitute? Somebody who is needy. Somebody who is poor. Incapable. Such a person is a destitute. And the opposite is rich, affluent, well off. I come from an affluent family. I come from a, a well off family. My parents are rich. Next, incite, instigate. Don't instigate people to commit mistakes. Meaning don't push people. Arouse. Don't arouse the sleeping lion. Let it sleep. Next one. Stimulate. Right? Stimulus and response. Ivan Pavlov's theory of classical condition. Calm down. Settle. Relax. Comfort. Resolve. We have never come across so many antonyms for one word. Right? All that we have heard is a word means there is one opposite. But there are multiple Opposites. And all these are connotative words. Scanty. Meager. Dearth. Dearth meaning what? What What if, you know, for example, if, uh, uh, what, what's her name? Uh, Amisha were to say, please come to my hometown, Mandia. There is no dearth for water. What do you mean by that? There is no scarcity of water. You find plenty of water there because we have so many lakes around. That's the meaning. Less. Opposites. Abundant. Plenty. Full of. What's the next word? How do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce this? Palatial. Palatial. Meaning grand, palace-like, elegant. I went to my uncle's hometown or I went to the Mysore palace and it's so palatial and beautiful. Right? It's so grand and elegant. Next one. Earthly, basic, rustic, simple. Illicit, unlawful, illegal. Legal, within law, normal, expected. And the last one. Facile, Easy, simple, straightforward as opposed to difficult and complicated. So these are some of the synonyms and antonyms for certain words. So like this, you will have to develop. So these are things that I can't help you in class because it requires a lot of individual practice. All that I could do is give you certain basics and tell you how to go about doing it. So it's for you to do it. And there are so many exercises. Let's see how many of you can solve the first First one. 
In the following question, choose the word which best expresses the meaning of the given word. Obliterate. What does it mean by obliterate? Have you already seen that? Or is it from your own experience that you are answering the question? You, you know the meaning of the word. Right, good. Obliterate meaning? Destroy. That's the closest. Next one. Myriad. Take a while, guess. <coughs> Yourself. Take a while, guess. Many. Absolutely right. Perpetual. <coughs> Answer. Continuous. Very good. Perpetual. Perpetually he makes this mistake. Continuously he makes this mistake. Fisher. Fisher. Excite? No. To fetch? No. There is a big fissure. There's a big opening. Fissure means opening. Next one. Despot. Despot is a tyrant. Okay. Next one. Select a suitable antonym for the word given in the question. Remorse. Very good. Jovial. Remorse is somebody who is very sad and inactive disparage if you don't know the answer i think you need to go to page number page number what i think that's the only way i should help you out Three point two five. Disparage. Any wild guess? Anybody? Yeah. Eulogize. Next one. Wex. I am vexed. What do you mean by that? I am vexed. What do you mean by that? I am upset. So opposite of upset. Amused is the closest. Very good. Novice. Yes. He is a novice. He is an experienced. <coughs> Sachin Tendulkar is an experienced batsman as opposed to Rishabh Pant who is a novice. Next one. Propriety. Indecency. Very good. Look at the next one. In each sentence below, underline the word that means the opposite of the italicized word. Italized, italicized word. Many people have pointed out the harmful effects that a working mother may have on the family, yet there are many statutory effects as well. Beneficial. Very good. Second one. Trying to control everything your teens can do can impede their growth. Hamper their growth. Very good. That, that can stop their growth. During their training, police officers must respond to simulated energies. Made up energies. Very good. Fourth one. I have seen students surreptitiously check answer sheets during exam. Secretly. Very good. And the last one. In formal communication, be sure to avoid ambiguous language. Unclear language. Very good. Okay. So these are certain things that you must be aware of. Let's move to the next one. Root of words. Hmm? Yes, any doubt? 
Any doubt? Shall we move on to the next one? Yeah. Yeah, root words, I am sure you must have heard of certain prefixes and suffixes. What goes before certain word was what goes after certain words. Those are literally what it means by prefixes and suffixes. Look at the sheet here. So when you say arrow, what it means? Air. Right? So, what are the words? Aerospace, aeroplane, aerodrome, aerate, aerial. These are certain words. What are the meaning of each of those words? Aeroplane means it's a vehicle. So, each one has a different one. So, anthrop means man. Anthropology is a study of man. Philanthropy means love of mankind. Misanthrope means anyone who has hatred towards mankind and anthropomorphism means attributing human characters to a god or animal or object so likewise there are so many such things okay now i want you to take this exercise and let's see how many of you can answer it number one displace number two decode decode Number three, prevent. Number four, antisocial. Number five, disobey. Number six, overact. Very good. Number seven, antiseptic. Number eight, overage. Not preage. Overage. Next one, depend. Last one, preserve is also right. Deserve is also right. Right, choose the correct meaning of the given root words. Duo, two. two. Odd, sound, very good. Biblio, book, very good. Said, sleep. Ego, self. Okay? Right, now what is prefix? What is suffix? Anything that begins before the word is a prefix. Anything that ends is a suffix. I want you to take down these words and I want you to find out whether there are prefixes or suffixes before each of those words. Before or after each of those words. Number one. Stand. Number two. Belief. Number three, honesty. Next one, amputate. Scribe, S C R I B E. Scribe, S C R I B E. Benedict, B E N E D I C T. Annual Back B A C K Functional Next one is Form F O R M
नेक्स्ट वन टेरेस्ट्रियल टी डबल आर ई एस टी आर आई ए एल टी डबल आर आई एस टी आर आई ए एल ऑर्डिनरी इंपोस्ट वर्ड ऐसे इंपोस्ट हाउ मनी थर्टी टू मोर मीडिएट lingual so see if you can write down the prefixes and suffixes for each of these words there could be more than one for some words
Shall we start? Yeah, so we'll start uh, with you, Sujita. What's the first word? Stand. Stand is what I said. So, if you were to think of a prefix for stand, it could be understand. Right? But if you want to look up, look, uh, look at a suffix for stand, then it could be stand hyphen up, stand up, standardize, standard, stand only. Standard, A-R-D. You are adding something as suffix, right? Standard. Right? So that could be some of the prefix and suffixes. Second one, yourself. You. Honesty. Belief is the second one. Okay, so. Do you say unbelief? Disbelief? Believable. Belief is also something that you can think of. Unbelievable. So there is a prefix and a suffix. What else? No. Apart from that in belief. No, disbelief? No, you don't say misbelief. You say miserable not misbelief it's disbelief I am in disbelief is what you say next word okay dishonesty honestly yes honest honestly okay honest honestly honestly speaking dishonest next one Amputate, yes. My friend met with, met with an accident and so they had to amputate his leg. Amputation. Amputation. A M P U T A T I O N. Next word. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe, describe, prescribe, proscribe, P R O S C R I B. Yeah, yeah, that was told. Subscribe, prescribe, proscribe. Subscribed. Okay, fine. So you are using it in the past tense. All right. Proscribe, describe. All these are examples. Next one. Ah. Benediction. 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 Yes, you have a doubt? But here you just add D alone. Because subscribe already has E in it. So E, D, E, D. D and D, E, D are all suffixes. Okay. Benediction. Next one. Annual. Ah. Annually. Annually. Biannual. What else? Semi annually. Annually and biannual. Bi Next one. Backup. Ah. Backup. Backup is hyphenated. That's suffix. Have you ever heard of the word, I was taken aback by surprise, A-B-A-C-K, aback. Back up, aback. Next one. Functional. Ah. Dysfunctional. Dysfunctional. Malfunctioning. Functioning. If it is function, then it is functional, dysfunctional, malfunctioning. There's no word as functional. Next one. Form. F. O R. F O R. Perform. Reform. Uniform. Deform. Inform. Formation. Very good. 
form what else pretty much next one ah over trust you come up with the right word yes you have it in your mind no no extra terrestrial see i told you you have it in your mind extra terrestrial next one ah extra ordinary ordinarily okay if at all you want to use the word that much next one impose impose ah imposter very good imposter he such an imposter ah that much next one ah immediate is the first one intermediate is the second one mediator is the third one immediation have you heard of the word immediation as a prefix and a suffix as well next one eh yeah? lingually bilingually multilingually very good monolingually antilingual yes next one that much right look at the exercise quickly use a prefix to find the opposite of the correct given words wrap wrap up Cur connect disconnect behave misbehave fold unfold manifold next one spell dispel very good dispel complete the following sentences by using the appropriate form of the word given in bracket add a prefix or a suffix the team he supported was able to win the championship, championship. very good i think that you should what you reconsider your decision the ceo ceo has been responsible for many unpopular decisions very good his dash comments his sexual comments made him disliked by the female employees dash of speech freedom of speech some tv shows are completely unsuitable for children the party was disastrous very good the party was disastrous everything went wrong they had to tranquilize tranquilize, tranquilize the lion he needed to regularize the temperature or regulate the temperature it's regulate the temperature and the last one you need a combination, combination of motivation organization and revision to learn english phrasal verbs quickly a phrasal verb is a verb or is a group of words that function as verbs as a verb it consists of a verb that is combined with a preposition or adverb or both look at the example pass away die pass out lose consciousness pass up he passed up meaning he declined an opportunity so these are phrasal verbs you either use what combine it with preposition or with an adverb what's an adverb an adverb describes the verb take a look at the examples in this particular thing phrasal verb with look 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 after look into look out look for look through what do you mean by look through look through everything very detailed okay look up to i look up to my father because he is a fine gentleman look away you turn your eyes away i saw my enemy coming so i looked away from his direction right next one bring if you use bring as a phrasal verb bring about meaning bring about a change 
bring someone around bring up raise a child bring down don't bring down your father's company and reputation bring off cost to be successful succeed in an attempt bring on bring on this is a famous yes bring on what's the famous subtitle of right bring on team india bring on the cup next one bring in to introduce changes he brought in a lot of changes in the office next put put away put back put down put forth put forward put off put on put out put through put someone up put up with i am unable to put up with my uncle or unable i am unable to put up with my friend or my roommate because he is extremely annoying next one take take after what do you mean by take after aditya takes after his father what does it mean resemble, resemble the father take apart virat kohli took apart the west indian bowlers meaning what he smash them on all par parts of the ground take back i take back my words i am sorry i apologize take someone in to allow someone to be part of your group take something in take off take off meaning what take off a flight to leave the ground and fly to become popular or successful he took off pretty soon meaning what he was successful pretty soon to leave a place quickly colloquially you say take off please take off this place please leave this place quickly take over to take charge of to take control over take up take someone on take someone out take someone something out the next phrasal verb look at it bear with someone be up to something to change hands to change color right each one has a separate meaning and i want you to go back home and read it one more time let's solve the exercise each sentence given below contains an incomplete phrasal verb complete the expression by supplying a suitable preposition or adverb particle choose your answer from the options given in the brackets okay all maria's relatives are of the opinion that she takes after very good after her grandmother. grandmother next one the music is too loud could you turn down the turn down the volume, volume up volume please quick get get under the bus get on the bus next one we will take this issue over we'll take this issue up when we meet next week i am afraid that we have run out of out of juice complete the following sentence by filling in the blanks with suitable phrasal verbs i thought the conference was going to be boring but it it turned out to be quite useful he dashed the kitchen and made some tea he went into the kitchen and made some tea the police have been looking for him ever since he ran away of the prison took off of the prison we left but then there is another off there so it doesn't make sense there we left an hour earlier but we drove so fast that we were able to catch up with him mm. the president asked the members of the cabinet to dash their letters of resignation pass pass to withdraw to withdraw their letters of resignation and the last one for today collocations now what do you mean by collocations a collocation is a familiar grouping of words especially words that habitually appear together and thereby convey meaning by association for example we usually say heavy rain and not strong rain or big rain so that is collocation of words there is a particular word that will always come with another word right let's see what are these even though they are grammatically correct but both strong rain and big rain sound completely strange you don't say big rain but there are people who say there are there was big rains yesterday 
there was a strong rain yesterday but then there are also other ways of saying it rained cats and dogs yesterday what do you mean so heavily yesterday right so that's also possible why do we need collocations makes language interesting and natural helps adhere to proper pre-decided structure of language yes language is structured right aids in giving other better forms of presentation of words enhance language skills and leads to innovation to some extent beautifies the language so these are examples look at this what are the types of collocation number one noun plus noun tea leaf service industry single entry death camp peer group street name noun plus verb dogs bark water flows bears growl pigs grunt paper flutters leaves rustle crow cause c a w s elephant trumpets which bellows which bellows which neighs any idea just horse neighs so these are things that you'll have to develop next one adjective plus noun high fever high is the adjective there burning sensation burning is the adjective there blurred vision sumptuous meal dwindling prices dwindling meaning what fluctuating, fluctuating. very good critical analysis so all these are adjectives adverb plus adjective completely satisfied infinite infinite simile small meticulously studied thoroughly destroyed all these are examples verb plus adverb performed magically sang melodiously read thoroughly informed repeatedly any other example caught repeatedly in the examination copying right so these are examples next one business related collocations make it profit profit or loss what is that sales figures security blanket dollar diplomacy blank check service charge trade route draw attention to chair a meeting annual turnover is that what is the meaning of it <laughs> yeah each one is an example for a business collocation i thought at times you know the moment i say something you will stop but you kept continuing anyways don't confuse all these are examples for business related collocations not this one is the meaning of the other one all are business related collocations so yeah how to learn collocations if at all you have a doubt read extensively see how do you know a horse neighs these are things that they would have taught you in your first standard second standard right uh, so what bellows what bellows you must tell me go back home and search it right these are things that you must familiarize yourself with. next one read extens extensively why reading books newspapers we come across use of collocation that shows the proper usage try and make different collocations check for few combinations you might come up with something new always refer to a di good dictionary to look for collocations club words of a category for example collocations related to time distance money etc think of various collocations possible for a given word for example remember i faintly remember vividly remember distinctly remember hardly remember all these are different collocations of the word remember so likewise you should also come up with new new things provided it is appropriate let's do this exercise dash sun rising sun dash ice melting ice dash meeting annual meeting anything else group meeting okay next one dash completely agree completely pain 
unbearable pain very good that's an example for what pain is a what pain is a what pain is a verb or a noun or a phrase or an adverb or an adjective pain is a verb so unbearable pain is what what is the difference between adver adverb and adjective is this okay so what is this thing it's an adverb it's an adjective what sort of pain you describe the pain unbearable pain it's not unbearably painful when you add ly it becomes an adverb does it make sense unbearable is an adjective hmm. how is that uh, unbearable unbearably but here it is used as an adjective right next one freedom complete freedom enormous freedom excessive freedom all these are possible next one rule overrule under rule I don't think there's any word like under rule. Hard and fast rule may not necessarily be a phrasal verb. That's a usage. Next one. Decision. Firm decision. Strict decision. What else? Huh? Quick decision. Yes. Next one. Single unit, multiple unit. Huh? Yeah, you said something. Per unit. Per unit is also possible, but yeah. Absolute unit. Absolute unit. I don't think it's. Game. Next one. Wind. Strong. Strong wind. You don't say heavy wind. Strong, Strong wind. What else? Anything else that you can think of? Next one. A presentation. Prepare for a presentation. Arrange a presentation. Make a presentation. Dash an argument. Do you make an argument? Present an argument. Right? Next one. Time. On time. In time, over time, anything else? Valuable time can also be possible. Spend time may not be. Spend time can also come. Save time, yes. Next one, dash a meeting. Organize a meeting, call off a meeting, attend a meeting. All these are possible. And the last one, burst into laughter. Burst into? You burst into tears? burst into flames okay what into tears do you burst into tears go back and check if there is something called as burst into tears and let me know tomorrow two exercise one whether it's burst into tears the second one which bellows and then the third one burst into laughter you don't burst out of laughter. You burst into laughter. And then the third one is? Case study. Case study. Right? One last thing. With that we will finish this. Idioms. Right? I will make it uh, short, and, uh, short and sweet for you. If I say he... Uh, um, what's your name? Tanuj is a hard nut to crack. If I say so, what does that mean? More than he is not open to everyone. Is there anything else that you can think? He is very difficult to not understand. He is difficult to break into. Meaning to say, he is so strong. You can't break into him. Right? Now look at this particular thing. Black sheep. 
I am the black sheep in the family. I am the odd one out in the family. Everybody has the same characteristics, whereas I don't have the same characteristics. Second one, a bed of roses. Life is not always a bed of roses. There are also going to be thorns. That's an idiomatic expression. It's not going to be comfortable all the time. To bleed, uh, to beat black and blue, blue. Right. The auto driver beat the passenger black and blue for raising a question against him. Next one. To blow one's trumpet. My teacher always blows his own trumpet, meaning he praises himself always. Kith and kin. I cannot come away from my kith and kin to live with you. A hard nut to crack. A difficult thing. Problematic. A cold reception. I went to my old friend's office. But then there was a cold reception. I wasn't welcomed appropriately. Lion's share. I got the lion's share of the profit. Major part of the profit. Other fish to fry. This is not the only work. I have other fish to fry. I have other important works to do. All and sundry. Good morning all and sundry gathered here. One and all gathered here. A square meal. Complete meal. Right. Poor people cannot even eat a square meal. Because they are penniless. To, to take French leave. To take uninformed leave. Ramya Krishnan took French leave from the CA classes. Meaning uninformed leave. Example. Man of straw. Man of no substance. Meaning what? Someone who doesn't have anything. Right. He is not somebody who is a genuine person to trust. Right. So there are so many such things that you will have to look at. Now let's look at uh, the practice exercises there. Select the correct meaning of the idiom phrases given below. Bone of contention. Area of agreement. Bone of contention. Yes, only he is answering, only they two are answering, others. What is the right answer? Subject of dispute. Subject of dispute. Second one, to rule the roost. Very good, to dominate. To grease the palm. To offer bribe. Yes, to offer bribe. Next one. Storm in a teacup. Make a big issue of a small thing. Next one. Long for. Desire. Very good. P, uh, pen and ink. In writing. Give it to me in pen and ink. Meaning in writing. Take after. Resemble. A far cry. Very differently. Hobson's choice. No choice at all. And the last one. In the pink of health. Best of health. Best of health. Pink of health meaning? Pink. Best of health. That's why you know the pink is a symbol of health. Right. Who's, who's an example for that? Pink. Why do they play pink cricket match every everywhere in the globe? To make people aware about cancer. Pink. Right. It's, it was started by this famous Australian bowler called Glenn McGrath. Because his wife died of breast cancer. And then later on he started the pink test match. And then later on it was also something that was formulated by the English 
former captain Andrew Straw because his wife also died of cancer. So across the globe there are people who support such side kind of things. Right, so with that we come to an end of chapter 3, end to chapter 3. We will move on to chapter 4 in tomorrow's class. Thank you.